Hey everybody, so I'm going to continue talking about the nature of reality, um, what it is, what it isn't, and why people seemingly are stupid or terrible. Uh, I already did a video that discussed individual reality and cons uh, consensus reality, so if you haven't watched that, go check it out. It should literally be the video right below this one, the one I did just before this one, assuming that I actually upload this one. Um, to recap it just briefly, we have our individual realities and we have our consensus realities. Individuals meaning what we perceive as an individual. And then consensus reality, which is a, a group mentality. So a consensus reality is like people going to church. When, you, when they go to church and they have the worship service and they talk about God... Think about like a revival service. If, if you're in the United States uh, or if you're familiar with Christianity, they do these revival services in some churches where everybody gets really, really excited. They get into this highly energetic state and they all experience God. Um, that's an example of, of a consensus reality to the extreme. Now, that goes all the way into a, a discrete altered state of consciousness, uh, which is defined by Charles Tart, T-A-R-T. Um, yes, yeah, like a sweet tart candy or like a tart, like a not so great woman. Um, so he's the one who just, who defined the concepts of discrete states of consciousness and discrete altered states of consciousness. Um, now I realize this is all, all of this stuff is sort of very abstract and this is a lot of new information to throw at you. So I, I hope you can digest it, uh, as I just sort of rattle it off. Um. Uh, now, in, in general, what we perceive as our individual reality is sort of a broad average of several things. It's uh, an average of what our senses tell us, and then our, our sensory input is combined immediately on the spot with memories and our subconscious. Um, so all of our senses come in, sight, sound, hearing, taste, and touch. There are memory mechanisms that uh, say, hey, that's a dog barking, that's a, a cat meowing, that's my wife screaming in my ear. Uh, we, we have these memories that automatically link up what we're sensing to something that's um, identific identifying, identification, I, I, identif uh, so, so we have uh, a pairing with memory, and then we have pairing with subconscious, which is things like our reactions. So, for instance, uh, perceiving an immediate threat, like when somebody runs up on you and goes, boo, uh, you know, you jump, right? Because you get that sensory input, and it not only uh, uh, cues in with memory to let you know this is your friend messing with you, but your, your subconscious is also there processing and it perceives that as an immediate threat because it's a sudden loud noise and all of the emergency mechanisms of your body kick in and cause you to jump and have a reaction all of this happens in fractions of a second um, so uh, what ties into your subconscious is emotions and uh, your perception of your location in space and time so in addition to subconscious processing, your subconscious is built upon emotions and your uh, uh, perception of where you are in space and time. So for example, right now I'm in my car driving. So as I'm recording this video, I'm, I'm acutely aware of my location in space time and I'm processing visual input from the road uh, and my body is responding accordingly. So all of this stuff, keys, all of this stuff, uh, I guess, comes together. All of these signals join up into what's known as your awareness, which is basically you and everything that you're experiencing. So to, to borrow some terms from Elon Musk, there's a whole group of thinkers who are saying that it's, the possibility exists that we're all living in a simulation, right? So if we're just a simulation, if we don't actually exist and everything we're experiencing is not real, uh, 
then if you think of it like that, if you're just a consciousness and no body, that is your awareness. Now, your awareness tunes itself in several ways. It tunes itself by the whatever the general the uh, consensus reality is. In other words, the group of people you're with, and it also tunes itself to the uh, uh, the five people you spend the most time with. So, if you hang around bad people, you start to do bad people shit, right? Hence the term he fell in with the wrong crowd, right? Hence peer pressure. Uh, peer pressure, falling in with the wrong crowd, those kinds of things, those are consensus reality. Uh, and we need to have consensus realities. And this is where social media is becoming extremely harmful to individual psychologies. Because with social media, it exposes you to the entire world. Uh, with, with the internet, we have access to things like Wikipedia. We have, you know, uh, our. Uh, I hopefully, if, if I say Siri, okay, good. My phone didn't pick it up. Uh, you know, but we can ask questions to our phones. We can do all these different things and get a response immediately. But the thing is, the people who control the technology control reality. So, whether you have an iPhone or an Android, Apple controls reality. Google controls reality through Android. Because when you look things up, when you go to, to look for, say, think of it like this, and this is going to blow your mind. The flavor of the apple pie you just cooked, Google decided what your apple pie should taste like. Because when you Googled the recipe, and the recipe came up and you read the instructions, there's probably thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of apple pie recipes on the internet. Google decided this is gonna be the apple pie you cook. Or they at least determined the probability, uh, prob they determined the probability of it. So they're gonna give you like four or five recipes and say, okay, um, there's a good chance they're gonna cook one of these. Well, think of it like this now, instead of apple pies, what if it's more important things like politics and news? Think of it with the apple pie scenario. Imagine if Google was like, hey, we don't like this guy. Next time he Googles a recipe, let's give him something that really tastes like shit. All right? So the Google algorithms can literally do this. They can decide what your apple pie is gonna taste like by giving you five shitty recipes. Google can decide what your view of politics are by giving you shitty stories. And we all know increasingly that if you're on the left, you've been going further left. If you're on the right, you've been going further right. Why is this? Because of the information being fed to you by an algorithm. So. When it comes to your individual reality and the fact that your individual reality is built upon consensus reality as well as your interactions with the five people closest to you, you have far less free will than you think. And if everybody's plugged in, here's a good, here's a good test for you. Uh, both of you, Get, get some friends together, sit down with your phones, and Google something on politics. You know, Google Joe Biden, or Google uh, President Trump. That's a good one, just Google President Trump. And then look at the news results, right? So you can look at the web results, you can look at the picture results, but if you just Google President Trump, all of you are going to receive different search results. They're gonna be sorted different, uh, the nature of the articles are going to be presented different. If you're a uh, conservative, then chances are all of the conservative news stories from Fox News and uh, Daily Mail, Daily Wire, uh, uh, Turning Point USA, and all of these patriotic blogs will come up. If you're liberal or left, progressive, whatever you want to call yourself, 
You're going to see things like from Huffington Post, MSNBC, CBS, um, and, you know, maybe the Young Turks and, and stuff like that. Just from President Trump. Oh, and there's probably going to be a Wikipedia page in there. But, no, well, not on the news section, right? So, you're all going to be reading different things about President Trump every single day. So, when you're sitting, when you're at work, sitting around the, the coffee machine, the coffee maker, sitting around drinking your coffee, saying, oh, did you hear the news about President Trump? Yes, I did. And guess what? Half of y'all hate him, half of y'all love him. So, and, and these things do not happen by accident. Google tracks, just, just with the, if you have an Android phone, right now, Google is tracking 29 data points about you. Right now. Yes, right now, right now. I don't know how many Apple's tracking because I hate my iPhone and I hate Apple. But here I am with an iPhone anyway, so hooray. Uh, but yeah, to, 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 so to, to get at the core of this, your, your consensus reality is determined by an algorithm. And it's not just Google that does this. Amazon's in on it. Facebook is most definitely in on it. Uh, you know, five, five to seven years ago, we all remember, well, not all of us, when Facebook was first coming online and it was, uh, MySpace was falling out and Facebook was coming in, Facebook just showed everything your friends share. Just everything in sequential order, which was annoying because if you had a friend who loved to sit on Facebook all day and just share, 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 you could, you, could, you could actually see people's uh, bathroom habits play out on your feed. Because you knew when, when somebody was struggling, you saw like five, six, or seven posts all in a row. And it's like literally they, they, they shit a bunch of posts onto you, your feed while they're taking the shit, right? It's just a big, long poop of sharing. Uh, and, and that doesn't happen anymore. What happens now? Well, it mixes in ads. Those ads come from God's loads of information, loads of data being tracked. Um, I found a video yesterday on just all the different settings that you should immediately shut off on an iPhone. I'll see if I can find that link and post it, but I'll probably forget. If there's no link posted in the description, comment and remind me and I'll, I'll go find it. Um, yeah, you got to do that for me because I won't do it. At least I know myself. So, so you see how the effects of consensus reality uh, are, are highly, highly uh, tunable and manipulable by social media. Well, social media most definitely has a political agenda. They most definitely have one. Um, if you don't believe me, Bernie Sanders last week in the, the second presidential debate was being hosted by CNN and Bernie Sanders was was talking about his Medicare for all plan and while he was talking about it Jake Tapper was the host and he goes oh and by the way uh, he, he said what did he say I'm trying to remember his exact quote he goes and by the way big pharmaceutical companies will be advertising on this program tonight to tell you about all the to convince you that Medicare for all is a bad plan he said something like that. And as soon as he said it, Jake Tapper cut him off. He goes, I'm sorry, you're out of time. He goes, well, just let me finish. And Jake Tapper's like, no, I'm sorry, we're out of time. We need to move on. And like Jake Tapper just goes in and cuts him off and doesn't let him finish. And as big of an event as that was, try Googling it. Uh, go to YouTube and try searching for just that one specific clip. It's out there. But Google's Google doesn't bring it up and, and neither does... Um, and neither does YouTube. You can find it if you have the link. And if you know specifically what to look for, uh, you might can find it. Now, if you go to DuckDuckGo.com, you can find it on DuckDuckGo. Right? I'm a, I imagine that's a search engine you haven't heard too much about. Give it a shot. You'll see. Try to find where Bernie Sanders calls out CNN for selling advertising spaces to big pharmaceutical companies so that they could rally against Bernie Sanders. Try it. Bet you won't find it. Thank you very much. I'll see you on the next video.